Chapter 10, Understanding Resistance to Change. Change is the world's one constant. We live in a world that is ever evolving. Not one thing in life will stay constant through time. Yet even with the promise, humans still face challenges when it comes to withstanding change. Take Fred, for instance. He's a guy who loves cheeseburgers and milkshakes. Year after year, his wife will tell him to opt in for more vegetables to help him slim down and get healthier. When Fred thinks about it, he gets excited. Who doesn't want to have more energy and feel more confident? Why wouldn't I want to be healthy? He's on board for a couple days, but then Fred drives past his favorite burger joint on his way home from work. He says to himself, one more burger won't hurt. His wife isn't here to give him a hard time. It will be fine. The next thing you know, he's eating burgers and milkshakes regularly again. It's his habit. It's his feel-good food. It's his comfort zone. This continues until Fred goes for his annual checkup and is told by his doctors that he is at risk for a major heart attack. And the only way he'll turn around is if he adjusts his diet. Things suddenly become more serious for Fred, and he finally cuts down on those cheeseburgers. He realizes that in order to stay alive and be here for the people he loves, he needs to push past the discomfort and build new habits and new likings. For Fred, the decision to adapt to a change to his day-to-day -day is rooted in the deep psychiatric motivator that his life literally depends on making a change and getting used to a new normal. It's hard to get behind changing a habit that is easy, familiar, or enjoyable. It's the comfort zone that cripples people in moving forward. It's the comfort zone that drives resistance to change. Yet the comfort zone is where the vast majority of the world's population likes to live. People often experience a feeling of comfort in their environment where they are familiar. A person's stress level and anxiety levels are relatively low when things feel safe and when there is a sense of control in their activities. To step out of this mindset is a challenge. The psychological toll that change will bring to those who will endure it is too often an afterthought of those who are leading the change. The irony is the lack of consideration is oftentimes the leadership team slipping into a comfortable thought of their own that technology and processes will be the silver bullet that solves everything. Sorry to break it to you, but there's no such thing as a silver bullet when it comes to creating a digital strategy. It's time to shift that paradigm as a leader. It's time to stretch our mindsets. It's time to understand that the concept of change is easier discussed than implemented. When it comes to time for Phil in accounting to change his entire process when running through accounts receivable, there may be pushback. It's true as the sky is blue. The question is, how much pushback? Mastering perseverance through resistance to change is what will set apart the good from the great. To get past resistance to change, we first need to know how to identify resistance. Think of the concept of resistance as the iceberg that brought down the Titanic. Only the tip of the iceberg was apparent to the human eye, but it was a giant mass beneath the surface that caused the most damage and ultimately sunk the ship. Every story of resistance to change mirrors an iceberg. There will always be a small group of people that express or have expressed resistance, making it apparent to the naked eye. Maybe they're vocal about it to the management team or through a survey, expressing that there is no need for change and everything is functional well as it is. Maybe it's people who have shown resistance to different types of change in the past. Regardless of how it's realized, it's the employees that are intentional and obvious about their resistance to change that are the tip of that iceberg. The struggle comes when employee resistance is unrealized and unintentional. Let's look back again at Fred's story. 
The thought of change excited him. He wanted to feel good and look good, but when it came down to it, he would revert back to his comfort zone. A parallel story can be told about some of the employees on our team that will undergo a change in their duties, whether it's their day-to-day processes or the technology implemented in an attempt to streamline their responsibilities within the company. This is unintentional resistance and makes up the vast majority of the resistance to change we will experience through our digital transformation project. When an organization initially announces a change, excitement is typically at its peak. Nearly everyone will buy into the dream, the promise of more seamless operations, the potential of higher revenues, increased commissions, less busy work, etc. The possibilities are endless. It creates momentum that gets nearly everyone in the organization excited about what's to come. However, as the implementation progresses, some who were once excited will become threatened. Many times, automating an employee's responsibility will make them question what their role will look like once the implementation is completed. Questions will begin running through their mind and their excitement will sour. They'll wonder, will I still have a job? What about the spreadsheet I made that has been a hub for my team all these years? Am I going to need to learn a new skill? Before we know it, their perspective swiftly shifts into a fear mindset that drives resistance. It's these individuals who will resist the change more than anyone else. It's those who unintentionally resist that have the power to hinder a digital transformation and deflate the potential of a successful software implementation. When we begin crafting a digital strategy, it's important to be mindful about these two types of resistance. They will always present themselves when implementing any type of change. The tip of the iceberg, intentional resistance, is visible to all who pass by. However, the unintentional resistance that lies below the surface is far greater in magnitude than what appears to the eye. It poses a much larger threat to the success of the implementation. Example of intentional resistance. The head of sales of an organization decides it's time to implement a new CRM that will help his sales team track all of their leads and walk new clients through the sales process in an efficient and effective manner. His star salesman, however, is used to simply going to events, networking with prospects, and connecting with leads to the business development team via email or text. It's quick and simple, and it seemed great success. During a meeting to discuss the concept of incorporating a new CRM, the salesman states his hesitations. He believes that adding a CRM will only create busy work since he would need to enter all the lead data rather than connecting with people via email. Example of unintentional resistance. Phil in accounting has a beautiful spreadsheet that he created that has helped him track his work for the past few years. He has grown accustomed to entering his data on his spreadsheet. He knows where all of his numbers are and where to find the information, and it's something he was recognized for last year when he took the initiative to create it for his team. It's safe to assume that Phil is going to have a hard time when a new ERP system overhauls his spreadsheet, making his hard work and regular process irrelevant. The element that challenges most companies when it comes to improperly managing change is improperly managing the resistance that comes with change. A company can spend millions of dollars implementing new technology, but when the transformation is complete, there will always be a group of employees that becomes proficient at finding workarounds to the new process in place. They will continue utilizing their tired and true spreadsheets and documents that they utilized prior to the transformation. They will always skip the data entry process and just forward information on as they always have. Whatever their comfort zone, they will always find a way back to it until they have a reason not to, a reason that deeply motivates them 
to move forward and stay in that newly produced territory. There are so many variables that can cause both intentional and unintentional resistance that makes uncovering the root cause of resistance a seemingly daunting task. However, in order to craft a strategy around how to overcome resistance, we need to understand the root cause of resistance. There are three common root causes of resistance, and once we are aware of them, we can better spot the inherent risk of resistance to change. Competency. There will always be a fringe group of employees that will serve up intentional resistance. There are two speculative groups that will have the hardest time undergoing a change. The employees who are the most educated and competent and the employees who are not confident in their abilities to master something new. It's the outliers within an employee base that will often have the hardest time pivoting from their day to day, and they will be the most obvious in their pushback to change. Some of the biggest struggles in change management will come with companies that employ PhDs or highly effective and competent individuals. These individuals have so much faith in the way things work in the current state that they often shy away from adopting to something new. Unintentional resistance will be scattered amongst the rest of the employee base, but this group will typically be vocal. Misunderstanding. If people do not understand what they are being asked to do or why they are being asked to do it, they will likely resist. When there is not a clearly defined and positioned explanation of what is next, or if there is any fog surrounding how the future state will support those who will be losing their sacred spreadsheets, they will likely resist. This is where generic communications can derail a project. We cannot approach a change with a uniform blanket message to cover every team the same way. Change affects different departments, functional areas, geographies, and even individuals differently. The communication to each channel should have a cohesive message, but the carrot will likely need to be different for each department. Each department is motivated by something different. For example, those in sales are more money motivated. Those in accounting are more motivated by efficiencies and discipline of busy work. Having a clear, distinct message that is communicated properly is the first step to tackling any resistance that might come up during a change, if, for nothing else, to ensure everyone is on the same page and understand what's happening, when it's happening, and why. Misalignment. We often talk about how misalignment can destroy implementation efforts. The threat of misalignment also extends into the workforce the teams that will actually utilize the technology. Often tied with misunderstanding, if a user senses that an upcoming software initiative may impede what they know has worked in the past, they will resist the change. Consider the recent case of a consumer goods distributor who was directed by their parent company to implement SAP across all divisions. Prior to this implementation, the small distributor had run a very successful business by creating a niche for their product and maintaining an entrepreneurial spirit in getting things done. It did not take long for users to realize the procedural mandates that were coming as a part of the SAP implementation and standardization efforts of their parent organization would put that entrepreneurial spirit at risk. If things were to become more standardized, then the once flexible and empowering company culture would be compromised to fit the new system that was coming into play. In this scenario, there was misalignment in not only their understanding of the change, but there was misalignment between their culture and the chosen technology. The system they chose did not support their team's entrepreneurial mindset that helped the company thrive and empowered employees to do things in their own way to a certain degree. And it clashed when it came time to go live with the new software. 
The purpose of initially identifying the causes and forms of resistance is to help build a successful organizational change management or OCM plan as a part of the greater digital strategy. This is why most change management efforts fail because most people assume that the same change methodology that has worked for one organization will work for the other. Each company, each department, each team, and each individual has varying appetite for change. It is the responsibility of the project leadership and the executives leading the project to be mindful of how the change will impact everything from the company culture to specific job roles and responsibilities of those on the team. Once we have a grasp on that insight, we can craft a message that will alleviate the root cause of resistance. Regardless of the source, it's apparent and intentional and unintentional resistance to change is inevitable, no matter the organization. Beyond these initial root causes, resistance can also sprout from cultural issues within the organization as well. Many times, it's the company culture that determines the level of resistance that will play into the organization's push towards change. Some organizations have cultivated a culture of adapting well to change, while others have the opposite reaction. Regardless of where a business falls on the spectrum, gauging the level and rate of resistance we will experience in tandem with our kickoff to any digital transformation is a very important piece of the puzzle. In order to build an organizational change management strategy that will alleviate resistance head on, it's important to perform an organizational assessment that will highlight the challenges we'll face along the way. A great place to start an organizational assessment is to send a survey to the greater team. Surveying our team is a critical piece of mapping out our organizational change management strategy. To acquire employee feedback on the current gaps and holes within the current system is to dial in on the true need of the organization. In every organization, it's a promise that employees have gotten used to the current process and have developed their own approach to completing their daily tasks. To survey our team is to measure their mindset. It's to understand what's going well for them and what's giving them a hard time. It will provide a new lens into the day-to-day -day of each team's responsibilities. When done correctly, a survey could shine light on both intentional and unintentional resistance that will appear once the transformation commences, and it will give us a starting point in building out our organizational change management strategy. The way this survey is presented is what could differentiate fabricated answers about the gaps in the system and authentic and true answers that will reflect the good, the bad, and the ugly that each employee has to deal with each day. Let's face it, if we are going to allocate mass amounts of capital towards a digital transformation project, we want to get a lens into the good, the bad, and the ugly so we can find the right solution. However, if an employee thinks that they will personally be judged for their answers, they will not give us the truth. They will only tell us the good, and that's only a part of what we're looking for. Rather, here are a few ways we can introduce authentic survey responses from our team. Have a third party host the delivery of the survey. This will create a sense of separation between the employee and their company, making them slightly more transparent in their answers. We will have to put ourselves in their shoes. Employees will often sugarcoat their answers if they are aware that their management team will review their survey answers. It's far too common that filtered perspectives shared by frontline employees misleads leadership teams to focus on solving the wrong issues. We can't let that happen. Take management out of the picture and enable a third party to facilitate the survey. If we are planning to undergo a digital transformation, we're likely working with an independent third party consultant anyway. It's helpful to lean on them and ask them to facilitate the survey to ensure we are getting the most clear-cut, unfiltered feedback. 
make the surveys anonymous. If employees know their answers cannot be tracked back to them specifically, they will be more vocal about their concerns. At the end of the day, we're after their concerns and the area of improvement. By making it known that each employee's response will be anonymous, that is one more wall they will put down while delivering their answers. Ask the right questions. To set our digital strategy on the right course, it's important to ask all accompanying questions when it comes to help illustrate the current state of the processes. By digging deeper into the specifics, we will be able to identify efficiencies and source bottlenecks in different workflows. We can ask questions like, how do you like your current technology? How do you feel other department software compares to yours? Do you have any spreadsheets that you utilize to complete tasks in your day to day? Have you created any specific processes that personally help you or your team succeed? Throughout the survey, it's also an opportunity to garner feedback regarding our company culture including scaled or rating questions that will frame the organization's understanding and perspective of the company culture to help determine our team's appetite for change. Have employees score different attributes of the organization around team dynamics, trust between team members and leadership, and what, okay, what am I saying? Have employees score different attributes of the organization around team dynamics trust between team members and leadership, and what they believe the company values are in their culture. Once we have this information, not only will we have better insight into the needs of the organization, but we will also shine a light on the tip of the iceberg. We will get a feed for what might come up unintentionally as well. Resistance, both intentional and unintentional, will become fairly apparent after proper surveys are completed. Once the substance below the surface is measured and analyzed, it becomes more intuitive to dial in on effective organizational change management plans. 